The U.S. economy picked up speed in the second quarter, growing at an annualized rate of 2.8 percent, faster than the 2 percent economists had estimated. Let's take a deeper dive into how the U.S. economy did last quarter. Joining us now is William Lee, chief economist at the Milken Institute. William, great to see you again. Hi, Elaine. What factors contributed the most to the 2.8 GDP growth number in the second quarter? And do you think those same factors will likely sustain, sustain in the coming quarters? Great question. In fact, I was, when I was looking over the numbers, what struck me was the strength of the U.S. consumer came back in a strange area, auto sales. Uh, for the first time in a year, uh, people started to buy cars because cars became more available. And, and despite the high cost of financing, people felt they really needed to buy cars. Uh, the other thing that was interesting was business investment was also very strong. And that, to me, is a very good sign because business investment means higher future profits going to the future. And that means more underpinning for the stock market prices that are already so high. So, so there are really strong elements of the uh, GDP report. But there are some not so great elements as well. And the thing that struck me was a lot of the consumption came about because uh, people just start to take money out of savings. Uh, and that, to me, is dangerous because income, uh, pe what people earned, wasn't growing fast enough to support this very high level of consumption that we saw this quarter. I want to take a couple of things that you mentioned and delve deeper sure. into them. But let's uh, go back to consumer spending trends and impacting GDP growth. Uh, what does this indicate about the overall uh, consumer confidence? You mentioned people are taking out of their savings. Is it because it's summer? People are going on trips. <laughs> are they getting ready for school? I mean, what, what is leading to that? Well, one thing that's good about the GDP numbers that the, US, that the U.S. puts out is that it's seasonally adjusted. So it takes into account these kind of summer binges that everyone goes on. Uh, but one thing that is for sure is that because the uh, job market has been so strong, there's so many jobs being created, people felt confident that they really can start to take money out of savings, even though they don't have the earnings to support this higher level of spending that they went on this, this quarter. But as I said, that's something that we can see for a quarter, maybe two quarters. But after that, people are going to have to start rebuilding their savings. And that means they really have to worry more about where their income is coming from. And unfortunately, a lot of the jobs being created are not giving them the high wages that are needed to support this high level of, of spending. We know that inflation is showing signs of slowing yeah. down. It, it's taking a little bit longer at places like the grocery store, maybe the gas stations. But how might that influence the Federal Reserve? I mean, do you think we'll see uh, something in September as predicted? The fact that we saw personal consumption expenditure inflation, which is their fa the Fed's favorite measure of inflation, come down so significantly from the first quarter. And if you look at the monthly data, that seems to be also chugging along in a way that allows the Fed to be more confident that inflation truly is on a downward trend. So even though I, there isn't enough evidence to really warrant them to make the decision to lower rates this next meeting here in July, it is almost for sure they'll be uh, lowering rates in September if this trend continues. You mentioned a few moments ago business investment and government spending and the rules in GDP growth. Let's talk a little bit more about that and how you see that uh, playing out in this back half of the year as the election season comes to a close and we uh, elect a new president. The financial markets are going to come on uh, and start worrying very quickly that the level of government spending is so high, regardless of who wins, whether it's Democrat or Republican, both parties will be spending more. And that means they'll be issuing more debt. And by borrowing more, the level of debt relative to, say, GDP is going to rise from its current level of, say, 94 percent, which Chair Powell has said, hey, we can handle 94 uh, percent of GDP debt. But when the debt levels are projected by the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, to rise above 110 percent uh, by 2030, and by 2034, it's going to be 120 percent. With interest rates on the rise, uh, real interest rates on the rise because our productivity is higher, um, that is something that's not manageable. And the markets are going to start to worry about that because the government spending and government borrowing is going to crowd out the money that's needed for business investment. And William, I want to jog memory lane here and see if you remember that phase, phrase from back in 1992 during the presidential election season. It's the economy <laughs> stupid. So yes, I, I am old enough to remember that. So depending on how we see the economy playing out and really how it impacts voters in their pocketbooks, what role do you see that playing in this upcoming presidential race in November? I mean, what do you what are you gauging? What do you think people feel? Um, because, you know, I still hear a lot of complaints about um, things, prices still being pretty high. 
Oh, absolutely. And, and in fact, um, one of the things that I mentioned was a worrying trend earlier is the fact that people's income adjusted for inflation is barely rising. Uh, and, and people feel that. They feel that in the pocketbook every time they go to the grocery store. And that discontent is clearly being blamed on the Democratic Party for having put out so much stimulus after the COVID was even over. Uh, and, and the D Democrats are going to have to do some repair work to, to explain somehow that inflation wasn't their fault. And the Republicans are going to be pounding away on that and saying, under President Trump, your incomes adjusted for inflation were rising. Now your incomes are stagnant or falling. And, and the divide between those who are rich and those who are poor has gotten worse. Those are the tensions in the economy that are going to determine who the uh, winner of the next election is going to be. All right. William Lee, always great to get your take. Thank you so much for joining us from Nevada. Thanks for having me.